Hello everybody, Flick here. It's time for yet another Let's Look At. Today we are taking a look at Lightfall by Bishop Games, a 2D platformer on Steam, although I am using a 360 controller because for platformers that's my control scheme of choice. Uh, the, the gimmick here is you play as a character who is able to create platforms. So it's a platformer where you make the platforms. And it's fun, I will say, but to kind of bury the lead, I cannot call this first impressions because I finished the game. I did it across a stream and a bit. The game is very short, which is a little bit of a shame. So again, just to kind of like bury the lead right at the start here, if you're not interested in a platformer where you plan to replay it and specifically speedrun it or just you know improve upon it via speedrunning, it may not be for you because I don't feel the price reflects the length of the game. We'll talk about it more as we go in though, uh, I'll go to the level selection and pick a, uh, an earlier act. We'll just start right at the start. In fact, the giant smith, why not? So I'd love to be able to kind of recap the story. Uh, one, I don't think I can do it without spoilers. And... Oh, this is act four? No, I don't want to do act four. I don't want to spoil things. Let's go back to the main menu. That was all the levels within one act. How did I change which act? There we go, that's more like it. Alright, we'll start with Act 1, the first proper level outside of the tutorial. That's more like it. We might get a little bit of story when the thing starts here as well. That would be Act 2, not Act 1. You know what? It's still fine. The game looks incredible. I love the way it looks. It's very similar to certain levels in Meat Boy, combined with a little bit of Limbo and, you know, that kind of thing. But as I was saying about the story, I'd love to be able to kind of tell you what's going on, but it, it's very convoluted. You, you play as this little gentleman here who can make four blocks, and that's it. You can't make any more unless you touch an uh, existing piece of ground that you did not create. That's the confines of it. You can also use them to attack. You can also make them appear in front of you, and you can also manipulate them as well. I'm, I'm using different buttons to do this, but that's essentially the, the width and breadth of his powers. You're in a world where there's mostly darkness. You're... You befriend uh, an old owl... And you kind of travel together to try and find out what happened to the gods and why they're kind of letting a people get wiped out by a, an evil other army. I think that's as spoiler free as I can explain. It's kind of... It, it's... You get thrown all these noon terms straight away, like the names of all the races, the names of all the gods. And I found it hard to help them stick in my head, so that's also probably why I'm having trouble. I just enjoyed playing Lightfall as a platformer. Honestly, the story didn't particularly do much for me. I think it's it's fairly predictable where it's going to go once you see certain story twists. Also, I think a lot of the dialogue is fine. The owl is the one who kind of narrates the whole game. Your character never speaks. But there's also these audio logs, well not audio logs, text logs. And I'm going to give a free bit of writing advice to the writer of the game. Don't info dump your first log. I read it out. I read it out for chat. It took me like five minutes. It was just, it was too front loaded. There's a thing in writing called info dump. You never want to do it. It's very, very bad. And unfortunately the game did it on the first one. So although I did go and pick more up, you see these yellow glowy things? That means I found more text logs. Never read a single one after that because it was just, the first one soured me on it. The other pips you see here are trapped, I was going to say humans, whatever the race was called. And you have to find and free them. I don't know if doing that will alter the ending in any way. It didn't seem like it to me. Like, there, it didn't feel like there was any other way for it to go. But maybe there is some kind of hidden ending you can go for. Anyway, A is jump as well. And you double tap to make the blocks appear. You can hold right trigger to go into a running stance. Which makes you much faster. But also kind of you have to account for skidding to a halt. Rather than coming to an, a, a, an abrupt stop like that. So we'll probably hear a bit of the voice acting here as the owl talks as we go past. So I'll let him talk so you can hear a bit of it. The stench of this place would put a rotting carcass to shame. Whew. Stay on your guard, boy. The marshlands of sorrows are home to many foul creatures. So I feel like I may have front-loaded this with too many negatives. To be clear, I really enjoyed playing through this. I love the visual aesthetics and the sense of speed you can get, like... Just backtrack a little bit here, just... The constant running and jumping and platforming as you go is very satisfying. Like, all through this, with one other exception that I'll get to eventually, the platforming felt so precise, and I loved it. 
Had to get had to get used to it. There's a little secret in there. I think I did that secret though. Every platformer kind of does jump height, jump speed, skidding to a stop differently. So you have to get used to it, especially if you played a lot of platformers. And it took me a little bit to reach that. But once I had, it was just incredibly satisfying to play. And I played it on stream. There is a VOD of it if you are curious. And the chat seemed to like it as well. Like they were getting involved. This is a checkpoint. Checkpoints are usually reasonably forgiving. Outside of like one or two blind spots where I feel like they were trying to make it very, very difficult just to prolong the length of the game. Behold, the Sentinel of I don't remember if that stops or not. Stomps, rather. Kamloops, across the deepest part of the Kamloops, that's it the one. Still stands today as a testament to their ingenuity. That's the people who are trapped. So we'll move along here and we'll find another checkpoint. I don't remember what that glow is. Oh. That's what that glow is. It's a stabby crystal. Hmm. Did I come up here last time? There are a couple of people I didn't save. Oh, there is a secret up here. Again, I don't know if I did it or not. Uh, I think I did. Uh, yeah, I remember coming down here. I did do this one. So, using the Y button, you can insert your square into things. And that gives you the ability to twist. To make platforms. So, that's how you would get up there. The proviso being... If you were to summon another block, you instantly lose that one. So you've got to be careful with the positioning you leave stuff in. I consider myself fairly adept at platformers. I played a crap ton of them when I was younger. And I did breeze through quite you know a bit of the game. Me most. It seems like no place was left untouched by these accursed crystals. Such oh, he jumped at me. Creatures. I agree. He jumped at me. Despite being fairly proficient at platformers, there were a couple of sections of the game where I did get stuck for quite a while. And it was always my fault with one exception. Usually it was just because I had to get better at my platforming, my timing, where to generate the blocks using the mechanics of the game provided. The final boss I think is very bad. It's not done intuitively at all, unlike the bosses that you fight previously to that, which are all kind of like platformer skill based. Last boss is more like you just don't get given any information and you're like go on, work out how to do it. My former pupil at times. I hope you two don't end up sharing the same fate. Way to bury the lead there. Hmm, did I do this one? We just got a checkpoint, so I can test. There are other mechanics that come in as you go, like, for instance, eventually there's kind of like these warping things that stop you using your powers. So you've got to kind of try and time your jumps and block creation around the fact that you're not going to be able to create them after a certain point. You are able to skip large sections of levels as well, depending on where you end up jumping up. I did that a couple of times by accident. But the game allows it. And I think it is I'm kind of embracing the you've got to want to speed run this and, and go back through again, try and improve upon your times, etc. to get any kind of longevity out of hmm. I hope what you're getting here. Trick up your sleeve. That's another thing we can do with our blocks. We can use them as a shield from beams and other projectiles as well. Game doesn't teach you that. You have to kind of learn it on the fly as you're fighting the last boss. It isn't just beams. But usually I did feel like it was just get better at platforming. The old get good. Anytime I was dying prior. But that last boss, it did kind of serve me a little bit. I don't think the last boss is well done at all. The asking price, which I just realised I forgot to mention, despite all the talk of it being, in my opinion, a little overpriced for how short the game it is. £10.99, so I would assume that's like $17, $18, but obviously check for yourself for your regional equivalent in the description box below will be a link to the steam store page for you Look, to check that the gate is open luxana and the other divinities must be nearby must they though must they see we can get some height here and i'm curious like oh never mind we reached the end of the level <laughs> following this new lead the boy and i ventured into a secluded part of the bog he wanted answers as to what was happening to our homeland and most importantly, he was determined to find his friends. As for myself, 
I was more worried about what could be lurking in these parts of Numbra. Madness in the mud. Let's get moving. I've had enough of this blasted swamp. Devourers? I'm surprised any of them survived after the Black Swarm's demise. Yes, that's a new enemy we've been introduced to. I'd destroy their nests myself if I weren't so old. Like in the good old days. If the old man ill talking to you is annoying, I hate to break it to you, but he does kind of talk to you through the entire game. So I didn't get any of the secrets in this area. It's a little bit embarrassing. Not even a one. Let's see, did I miss a secret passage here? I don't see anything. Oh, probably don't want to drop down here. You can't make blocks on the slime. That's the proviso for them. Ooh, you also can't kill his projectiles, even though they're also flies. But under here... This looks suspicious. Nope, never mind, that's just death. <laughs> Luckily, respawning after death is pretty quick. Although another thing that made the last boss very annoying is he monologues while you fight him, and they didn't think to do a shorthand version on repeat tries. Twitch chat and I got very tired of hearing it. Honestly, if I had known what to do on the final boss quicker, it would have been a barely two hour game. It took me like half an hour to kill the last boss. Oh, there's a secret I missed. Ah, yeah, I missed this thinking that I needed some kind of power here, but I think I've just got to dodge these. Hmm. Is that how I do this? Yeah, I think it is. I'm going to need to wait to try and get a jump because I only have two blocks left. <sighs> Nearly. I did it! So that's one of the aforementioned audio logs now following me, which will get handed in if I can get back to a save point. Shouldn't have done that. I don't think I have enough height to get out now. Uh, it's going to be close. Nope, didn't quite make it. I think I would have to do that again to collect it. Yeah, I would. It doesn't store itself. That's unfortunate. It's tougher to get out of than get into it. It's right below here. Let's have a look at the speedrun mode. I don't have much else to say about Lightfall. I, I wish it had more content for the price they're asking for. If this was a five, six pound game, I'd be like, it's worth the money. You'll enjoy it, especially if you like platformers. It's a very pretty platformer with a lot of intuitive puzzles other than that one proviso. So let's speed run the very first area. I'll see how fast I can get through it. I wonder if it turns off the talking in speed run mode. Oh yeah, doesn't it? Because wasn't the L there last time? Well, that's good. I'm glad they thought of doing that, and yet they didn't think to do the the obvious thing of doing a shorthand version of the boss monologue. I'm not sure why certain like. Yeah, why are these blocks semi-transparent when they weren't before? It's very strange. I also don't know if there's checkpoints. Wait, that's a secret up there. That's not progress. No! Oh no, there is checkpoints. Alright, that's not so bad then. Then he jumps up. Yeah, they go fast and then they bounce. It's making me think there's not platforms when there is, which is kind of annoying. Remember rightly, you can cut out a lot of this by coming up here. I 
Yeah, why is that head see-through now? That's very strange. <laughs> is it because it's story related so they don't want you doing the story mode stuff in speedrun mode? Maybe. I don't think there's any way to do this faster. Speedrunning's not my type of thing, incidentally. Usually I pick my own pace for a game and stick to it. But I do think this falls into the category of game that would look very satisfying to see be done like perfectly and as fast as possible. Oh yeah, I got an achievement for doing that. Two minutes, seven seconds, obviously could have improved on that. Your time was faster than three minutes thirty. This run will be remembered in the Pantheon of the Gods and other players will be able to race your ghost. Oh, I mean, that's nice. I don't know how many people have the game currently. I'm also a bit scared to load the leaderboard because of the general quality of names that you can see in Steam, but let's give it a go. I am 13th in the world. That's not bad. Fastest time is 1 minute 30.861. Yeah, so you can shave an entire 30 seconds of, or 37 seconds of the time I just put in there. Granted, I did die once, so that would have wasted at least 10 seconds. Okay. I'm, I'm okay with that. I am content. This has been a look at Lightfall by Bishop Games. If it's on sale, I would recommend it. If it's not on sale, I would say only if you're interested in the speedrun aspect of the game would you be getting your money's worth. It's a pretty game, the story is okay, the voice acting is fine, there's not really any voice acting beyond like the villain and then also the owl guy. It's five acts long. Oh, that's a full speedrun option down there at the end. Interesting. I wish they'd thought to price that a little bit lower but maybe there was some constraints that stopped them doing that i did notice that on the title screen it is in part funded by the canada media fund so i don't know if that has any kind of extra stipulations connected to it but anyway check it out for yourself at the steam store page which i will have linked in the description box below thank you very much for watching and i will see you next time Ta -ta for now